Okay, it looks like people are okay with Vitra. Alright, looks like Vitra is the choice. We are going to be playing on Vitra. Which is a neat map. So this is also the last Swiss round. So whoever is top four after this round moves on to the bracket stage. But like I said, I think anyone has a chance to do so. Although if both Kshatriya and Average Plan and Sprang and Dun Don win. Okay, so this works this out. So if both of these people win, it's 1.5, 1 1.5, and their opponents stay at one point each. So yeah, there will be a clear maybe not quite a clear set of four, because that's at one point each. There'd be another one point potentially if Norm 16 and Anarchid lose. I'm a bit surprised there was only three rounds and not four. I think four would have been a bit clearer to who's actually going on, but whatever. We'll see. Three rounds hopefully will be enough. There are tie-breaking tools if necessary. So we'll deal with that if it comes to it. <sighs> Vitra is a cool map. I haven't really seen it used 2v2 much, though. It's a popular 1v1 map. It's a pretty good 1v1 map, too. I like it. It does occasionally get into a bit of a stalemate-y territory, but it's a good map nonetheless. It's more there's this big hole in the center. Actually, it's not even as much stalemate-y. It's kind of interesting because there's a big hole in the center, which I'll get to now that I can actually show it. Because there's a big hole in the center, and I don't need the deluxe playlist on right now, so you can go away. Because there's this big hole in the center, vehicles can't pass through this hole in the center. This entire thing. So instead, what ends up happening, I mean, bots can, but it's a little bit tricky. They can't pass in every single position. Usually you get people going along the east and going along the west, and it's, it's a neat little thing where you're kind of going around. So it becomes interesting when it comes to trying to keep momentum. However, in a team match, it's a bit different because it's not just one person trying to focus on one side or the other. It's both people, one person on each side. So that's going to be different. Anarchid going for, Okay, Anarchid and Norm going for what looks like a warrior drop. And Sprung and Hokomoko probably also going for a warrior drop. Both players doing the warrior drop. Who can drop warriors better? That's what we need to know. Anarchid starting out. Okay, well, we have the warrior drop. No! Sprung going for Glaives. We're not getting a warrior drop from Sprung and Hokomoko, apparently. At least not immediately. Some Blast Wings and Glaives first, which will be good for them because they'll scout out the warrior drop coming in. No, it looks like actually North Team is going to be playing a relatively conservative game. I mean, they do have the factories right next to each other, which is a little unusual. But otherwise, yeah, this is going to be a fairly normal game, and Warrior Drop's been scouted out. Like, it's known. It's also burning down one of the Valkyries, slowing it down. Nicely done! Slow down the Valkyrie a bit. I don't think the Valkyrie's going to... No, the Valkyrie's being repaired. Still slowed it down a little bit. Is that going to be enough? I don't know. The Glaives are not the obvious choice for dealing with this. Ticks, however, ooh, nice. The Ticks go into position. Unfortunately, North Team doesn't know where South Team is going to be attacking. And they're a bit out of position of the Ticks. And the Warriors have been dropped. The drop has been, at least, it started out successfully. A repeat drop won't be as easy, though. And Ticks coming in. Two of the Warriors have been stunned out. So at this point, the losses are a Metal Extractor... A couple ticks and two warriors in a Valkyrie. The one warrior <laughs> remaining retreating, walking back to base because what else is it going to do right now? Blastwing follow up, but that's not going to do too much. And we do have another Valkyrie. I mean, the Valkyrie is still in play, the warrior is still in play. We could see another drop potentially, but I kind of doubt it. It looks like Anakin and Sprung, sorry, Anakin and Norm are going for a bit more of a normal play at this point. They use the drop, looks like, more to just cover economic play. At this point, the North team having a bit of a harder time rebuilding. Gonna have to really focus on that. Still, that warrior... Okay, the warrior is dead. 
So North Team with Rapier. Well done there. Got rid of the Warrior. Okay, well, that was... That was that. Another failed Warrior drop. Warrior drops are tough. Even with the buffs that Warriors got, they're tough drops to pull off. Especially, I go... I'll grant, that one was scouted, and the ticks coming in there pretty much did the trick. If North Team hadn't scouted that out, the game would be over. The game would be over by now, but good scouting on North Team's part pretty much saved it for them. It's about the only reason they survived that. So good on them for putting the ticks out. And at this point, the North side taking everything up. The economy's about on par, military's about on par. And South Team... Well, they're rebuilding too, although they're they're a bit more forward. Quite a lot more forward, actually. In fact, in a way that North Team can take advantage of, Norm forced to retreat with their commander. Not enough glaives to kill it quite yet, although just about. Actually, you know what? We gotta make... Oh, wow, no! Norm's commander actually does go down! Very early commander kill. South Team, half the economy now. I mean, wow, that was a big blow. That's when a commander kill matters. Like, a lot of the time in 2v2 when you get a commander kill, the players seem to have about 40-50 metal. That was at 20. That was a quarter of their metal income, or quarter to a fifth of their metal income, right there. That, that Valkyrie just picked up a rock and threw it into the ground. I didn't even notice that. Okay, obviously I did notice that, but it was a bit late. But yeah, that, that's the thing. That was the perfect time to kill a commander. That was the best time to kill a commander. At this point, Hokomoko and Sprung are doing fairly well for themselves, despite that early rush. That early commander kill really made up for it. And another glaive attack coming into the west. I mean, looks like the rapiers aren't going to be able to do too much more good with the gremlins on, but... A bunch of glaives going over to the west... There's no radar! Totally unaware of this coming in. Does North Team have radar? North Team does not have... Really? Wow. I guess not. Oh, no, no, they do. Never mind, they do. North Team does have radar. Don't have a whole lot of radar coverage, mind you, but they do have radar. But at this point, those glaives pretty much able to get through a naked expansion. Unfortunately for them, the defenders were in place, but fortunately for them, there were enough... They took the defender shots and lived. Ooh, not quite behind the gunship plan. That didn't quite... Yeah, there was still a little vision. Wasn't completely over yet. Nice try, though. Ah, nice try. Gotta say, I'm still pretty impressed by that. And once again, those gremlins really showing they're a bit of a problem. So at this point, North Team can't really go for air. South Team, they have anti-air on lock, but... At the same time, they're relying entirely on the Commander Reclaim, which is done. Commander Reclaim is pretty much done. South Team, what can they do with the economy they have? They lost a fair amount of metal just from that Glaive Assault. And, I mean, from the Commander being killed. And now at this point, North Team, once again, with twice the metal income. And continuing to build up fairly well. I mean, North Team isn't too worried about being attacked at this point. Because that Valkyrie was killed. I mean, more Valkyries obviously could be built, but that would take a while. So they're not worried about a second warrior drop. They should be worried about the sides coming in, though. Three sides have been built, and they should be coming in fairly shortly. Although, are they going to reveal them? No, I thought... May are they going to hit that glaive? That would be a very bad idea. Last thing you want to do is reveal your sides in your own territory. That just completely gives it away. But at the same time, North team is pushing pretty hard. I mean... Not as much as South Team knows, but yeah, they're starting to push in. I mean, Warriors are just being streamed in right now. The Scythes have not been revealed. North Team's still unaware they exist. And South Team, again, taking some damage over here in the Southwest. So North Team right now is doing very well for themselves. Anarchist Commander very far forward. What's again? Okay, he's got Beam Laser. Not much else. They do have the Tridents nearby, though. So the Rapiers can't just kill him. However, why aren't the Warriors going for it? And Scythe attack on Sprung's commander. Sprung able to retreat. But I think... The... Well, wait. Why are they retreating into the Scythe? Bad move! That's death. Yeah, Scythe are twice as fast as a commander. 
And they've also gone hidden again. So Sprung's commander's gone down. Bit of a blow. But hey, North Team still has the economic advantage, so it's not the biggest deal. Still a blow, and Anakin's commander, however, under some threat. Bigger problem, though, is that front base, that fire base that was being used, that's gone. Or just about. Still got the power plants left. The territory isn't completely free of South Team's control. But North Team's just about broken it open. At the same time, Hokomoko with their favorite, the Amphib Factory, coming in with a nice duck assault over to the east. So this should wipe out everything here. This entire area is dead. This down to here at least is dead. All the defensive forces are over in the center. I mean, they're desperately scrambling back, but this isn't enough. Although, nice try with the... Wow, that's a lot of nanoframes. Nice try with the defender nanoframes. Actually, that did slow down the ducks a fair amount. They're still going to be able to deal with the damage they were going to deal anyway. Or most of the damage they're going to... Actually, no! They're getting distracted by the defenders! Wow! Defender nanoframes are... I didn't realize that was that powerful. Like, just abusing the AI, pretty much. Because I'm guessing ducks go, Oh, defender! That's a threat! I need to kill that first! So, they never kill the worker. They never kill the metal extractor. I mean, the metal extractors died, but... If it weren't for that defender spam, they those ducks would have been all the way down here. That was pretty big. And how many sides are there now? Eight sides so far. So South Team isn't going to let North Team get away with that too easily. And Anakin's commander trying to rebuild that forward base. And the Warriors can't get rid of it. The Scythe is going to stop the Warriors in their tracks. I mean, the Warriors might get a few shots off, but it's not enough. I'm a bit surprised at this point that we aren't seeing anything coming up from like, Glaive level weights. I mean, there are no Fleas potentially, but... Although, on the other hand, Spider Factory into Flea wouldn't be a terrible idea to get rid of all those Scythes. Still, Glaives would be an okay idea in a pinch. And Anarchid's Commander taking a bit of damage. I mean, not a huge amount of damage. But admittedly, where are the Tridents? Oh, whoa! Never mind. The Tridents are out of position. They went back to base to defend those ducks. Way out of position. The Rapiers won't be able to kill, but that was still a nice pressure threat. Unfortunately, the size were also revealed, but the Rapiers not... Are they able to get a hit in? No! No, they are not. However, nice distraction. Take advantage of the distraction. Hokomoko going to the southeast. As Anarchid is focused over to the north here. And Norm is not really doing anything. Really, I'm not sure what Norm has been doing. Feels like it's been kind of a one-on-two. Norm's been building up some tridents. But they haven't got a lot of builders. They are... Okay, now they're getting a crane. Now they're building up a bit more. But most of this game has been these sides. Like, North Team can't easily get rid of the Scythes, despite the massive economic advantage. The Scythes are stopping the North Team from just attacking outright, because North Team doesn't know where they are. They can't just get rid of the Scythes. The Scythes are still there. So it's keeping North Team on their toes, stopping them from being super aggressive. Because if North Team didn't have to worry about the Scythes, the game would be over. Like, they'd have been attacking, they'd have gotten rid of Anarchist Commander, they'd have continued pushing over. As it is, North Team is still getting a lot of territory. They still have a massive economic advantage. They're still doing very well. But I don't really see how this is going to work out, besides as a delaying tactic. The sides aren't going in and destroying the economy particularly effectively. They aren't damaging factories. They aren't stopping really anything meaningful. I mean, we, saw, we see a bit of a supply line interception. A bit. But I kind of expected this many sides. You'd see them going around the back, taking out the factories. They've taken out both these factories. That'd be a huge blow. That'd be a couple minutes of no production anymore. And Anarchid playing RAR here, who incidentally wasn't in the tournament, sadly. But yeah, Anarchid playing RAR with the Heavy Commander, Double Beam Laser with speed and t and range. What's the speed right now? 50 almost a second, okay. So yeah, speed, range, and Double Beam Laser, and the shield, why not? For good measure, have a personal shield. And the sides are building themselves in a not great position, but I don't think that Anarchid cares. I think they're confident they're, that the commander will just take care of everything. Of course, this is a good time for Hokomoko to go and start attacking here. It's open. They break the back of it. There's not much. Although the commander is going to be an issue. Actually, the commander is a huge issue. 
These ducks have got to do something. Like, either attack, like, go offensive Hokomoko, or go back and defend. Although defending is going to take way too bloody long. Those factories are basically dead. It looks like boys are going to stop the retreat. So Anarchist Commander is pretty much doomed. Despite these factories being killed, North Team has a massive economic advantage. Why are they not attacking, though? I do not understand this. There are so many ducks here. Does Hokomoko not realize that there's nothing in the back? At all? I don't know. They must be just really focused on the commander. And they must, they've clearly forgotten that they have force to the south. I'm guessing it's just fatigue, the fact that it's fairly early in the morning. It's the third match of the tournament. And now they've realized, oh yeah, right, ducks. But they haven't done anything about it, so I don't know. I mean, we saw that they saw that there are ducks down in the south. But I don't know if they actually saw that the ducks there are, you know, important. Man, those scythes. Like, seriously, if those ducks had moved forward and taken out the scythes, that'd be two, few, two or three fewer scythes. Probably be a difference maker here. I don't understand what Hokomoko is waiting for. Attack! Damn it! Attack! Sheesh! These ducks are bugging me. They're really annoying me. Why are they so idle? There's nothing to be idle for. Okay, now they're moving back. All right, get rid of the commander. Fine. I still think the main base is a better option, just given the sheer amount of units and the sheer lack of defenses. But sure, get rid of the commander. That's not a bad idea either. Just do something. I, Sorry, I didn't mean to get so frustrated. It's just... I can see those ducks doing so much damage. And really saving North Team's bacon. And they didn't do so. Now, Anarchist Commander's explosion is going to kill the most of these ducks. But still, Anarchist Commander finally going down. And the side is about to go up. But it looks like South Team probably going to throw in the towel. Anarchist wants to throw in the towel. That's for sure. North Team does still have a Cloakie Factory, does still have the Amphi Factory. South Team has their factories too, though. They aren't completely out yet. The Ducks didn't attack the main base. This is what I mean, like, attack the main base, smash that up, and then go for the Commander. It's not like they couldn't have done that. So yeah, that... I don't know, I don't get... I don't get that strategy. It was pretty well defenseless, and if they didn't know that... The sheer amount of territory that they have, that North Team has... I mean, they have radar. They know. They have radar. I'll grant the size, probably what it is. If I were to ask Kokomoge, they'd probably say, I didn't know where the scythes were. I was worried they'd attack me when I went to attack the base. Totally legitimate if that's the case. Doesn't make sense why the ducks were idle completely, though. does make sense why it was they were hesitant to attack, just not why they were idle and not, say, moving back. Because they weren't even in a position to defend especially well. Like, they were in front of this expansion here. Yeah, totally. They're like, here? Sure. That would make sense. But they were just hanging out here. They are just chilling off to the side. They weren't doing anything. That was the weird part. That they were perfectly in position to attack and didn't. So I don't get what that was. And now we have the Glaives to deal with the sides, but I don't think that's really the concern anymore. There are still a few of these, but only four... And Hokomoko's commander goes down, wiping out most of this expansion in the process. Most of those wind generators are gone. But that doesn't really matter. North has such a strong economy. South doesn't have much going for it. Norm appears to be still pretty determined to fight. Anarchy, on the other hand, has completely lost their spirit. Like, Anarchy's broken. They're a broken person. They'll be found curled up in the corner of a sanitarium pretty shortly. But Norm is trudging on. Still, though, North Team has basically won this game. <laughs> There's really no doubt about it. I mean, the boys are doing a really good job here. The thing is, yeah, sides can get rid of boys if they're close enough, but the thing with boys is that they're, they're able to slow down the sides and thus keep hitting the sides because the sides... I mean, basically, they deal enough damage that the sides attack as a suicidal mission. That's the problem. Ooh, speaking of suicide missions, those glaives. No, it looks like South Team is still in this. North Team not going to throw in the towel quite yet. But those sides, like I said, they aren't lasting. As soon as they get spotted, 
The boys just take him out. The shield ball factory just about ready. Is Norm going to go for a shield ball strategy out of this? I don't know if there's enough money in the South team to even support a good shield ball strategy at this stage in the game. If they had 30 or so metal, it'd be fine, but with 15 metal and no storage, I don't understand how this is going to work. Especially given that North team basically has everything, so I don't know. They might find a way. I kind of doubt it. They might find a way, though. Sharpshooters are coming in. Okay, sharpshooters are maybe a way. That would help get rid of the tridents for sure. That would... And sharpshooters from the north side as well, because why not? I mean, as soon as the sides are spotted, that the sharpshooter has ammo. Or rather, has reloaded. Which it has not. And side of the sharpshooter finally spot each other, but sharpshooter wins. At least, the first engagement. Sorry, Spectre. That's what they're called now. Spectre wins. This thing with Cloakie bot. Cloaky versus Cloaky when you get to this sort of units is that. There we go! This is what I expected five minutes ago! Why didn't this happen five minutes ago? Because now there's a bunch of dirtbags stopping it. But it's, I would say, successful nonetheless. Along with the Dante, that should bring the game to a close. I don't really see this lasting much longer. I mean, the dirt bags are an interesting choice, but yeah, this is this is over. The Dante will be able to take out the factories, and yeah, Norm has now lost their spirit. So two soulless husks are now going to be surrendering out of the game, as both of their spirits have been lost and broken. Actually, are we even going to have a resign? I don't think it's going to be a resign vote. I think this is going to end just because everything's been smashed to pieces. There's no time for a resign vote at this point. The only thing left are these three sides. That's it. And the sharpshooter. Or Spectre, rather. Like, resign vote is moot. <laughs> Game over. Right now. Oh, no, not quite. There's one, one conjurer. That's it. And that's the game. Not even a resign vote. North team just annihilated South. That rarely happens in tournaments. Even in tournaments, I should say. Even in tournaments, because tournaments are when you have more tenacity. But yeah. Good job for North. Clear win. Oh, okay, apparently Hokomoko just forgot about those ducks earlier. But hey, they still won, so at least that worked out. Wow, okay, so... That was it. That was the last match. So it looks like we have our final standings are going to need to be refreshed. <sighs> looks like final standings. Sprung and Hokomoko took the last match. They won 3-0. So that leaves Norman Anarchy at one point. Ball and Doom and Dynefriend also... Oh, there's actually a tie for fourth. Flores, El Torero, and Ball and Doom and Dynefriend are ambiguously in fourth place. Treachery and Average Plan and Sprung and Dunn are not tied, though. Although it looks like for tiebreaker purposes, Flores and El Torero are actually... Well, they have one extra win against their tied opponents. They've already beaten Ball of Doom and Dynefriend, apparently. Have they? No, they haven't. What? Oh, never mind. Tied opponents. They beat Norman Anarchid. Or did they? Yes, they did. They beat Norman Anarchid in round two. So, for tiebreaker purposes, Flores and El Torero get to the, the f next round. They get to bracket stage. All right. So, well done. Sorry, Ball of Doom, Dying Friend, Norm616, and Anarchid, you are going to be watching. But that is that is the Swiss stage of the tournament. We're going to be moving on to the bracket stage in a couple minutes, as soon as the as soon as the bracket is actually made. For the meantime, we'll have a short intermission until that happens, so stay tuned.